Let me give you some advice, bastard. Never forget what you are. Wear it like armor. It can never be used to hurt you. When I first heard they were interested in me for a fantasy show, I went, Ugh, no. I had an inkling reading the first book, going, oh my god, this is this is amazing. This this could really kick off. I was quite young and I had such a big imagination. In those scenes when I was younger, I would really convince myself that I was there and it was happening, you know? I'd never had any experience of acting before. I went to a very theatrically based drama school. We did three hours of camera training in three years. But then my fourth hour in front of a camera was day one on Game of Thrones. My first day on set was Castle Black. My first scene was, uh, there's just a very quick scene where I'm walking down the ramparts and I was so nervous. <laughs> yeah, I remember my first day on set. Oh my God, I fell off a fucking horse. <laughs> Jesus, this is my first job. This is like the first thing I ever did and they stuck me on a horse. Oh, I was falling off the horse trying to act still. Wow, a Khaleesi. <laughs> okay, let's do that again, please. I remember my first scene we shot from the pilot, and that was uh, the king's arrival. You know, the king rides in on horseback, and he has to get off his horse, and his robe was enormous. The horse rides in, he's like, ah, and then, hold, everyone, and then they run in with him, like a like ladder. They help him down, and they run out with the ladder, and then, carry on. Oh, here we go. I vaguely remember it. It was like, Sean Bean and Mark Addy and Lena, and I remember being so overwhelmed and terrified. I remember everybody clearly. I remember baby Sophie and baby Maisie and baby Isaac. And now they're, you know, out there full grown. The most shocking scene that I didn't see coming. Stop him, stop! <laughs> From then on, I started to distrust the show as to, like, whether they'd kill my favourite character or not. I think the most shocking was probably <laughs> my death. The Hodor moment, I couldn't quite believe. Hold the door! Hold the door! That was such a sort of, oh, my God! I watched The Red Wedding and I didn't really read into it in the script of what happened. I think I just did my bit and went la 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 and then when it came out I remember I watched it in the morning I'm a big guy big tough guy but guess what I burst into tears that was an absolute shocker I remember just watching going no 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 what it was brilliant do I have to call you Lady Stark now yes my favorite day on set would be the day that I was reunited with Maisie. That day on set, I've, I've just never laughed so much in my life. It was so much fun. It was a day with the wheelchair. I've still got that video, jeez. Me and Sophie just messing around on um, Brand's wheelchair. <laughs> I think the most fun scene we shot was season seven. We, we shot this big sequence, the loot train attack, and we shot that in Spain. It was such a beautiful, location and there was something about being outside every day and being on horseback i love riding go back eddies season three getting the unsullied was the first time that i amelia got to be you know like bitch and badass <laughs> uh it was really cool <laughs> Favourite day on set was definitely a day in asuna when we were doing the gladiatorial sequence my little girl was there. You know, she watched her papa work. David uh, said, oh, you know, come sit here, you can call. And so she was like, action. The fight between the Hound and Brienne of fucking Tarth. We'd studied and trained for that a long time. And when it all came to fruition, that was just fantastic. Iceland, season two, the first day we were there. That was my favorite day on, on Thrones. I'd never been to a more beautiful place in my life, and it was special for so many reasons. And it was the scene where I was not able to behead Egret. Strike hard and true, Jon Snow. My favorite actor to work with was Rose Leslie. There was something really special about working with Rose. You know, I really, really enjoy working with John Bradley. He saw this in, in a vision. 
I really enjoyed the scene with Mark Addy way back in season one, just because it was so intense. And it was like pages and pages long, and it was really unexpected from those two characters. Sometimes I don't know what holds it together. Our marriage. <laughs> There's an ease that I get with acting with Ian Glenn because he's been my pal the whole time. He's been my one, my buddy. <laughs> and the most beautiful thing about Amelia, she has no idea how good she is. She genuinely has no idea. And she still has no idea. She's always sort of vulnerable, which gives us part of her part of a great gift. I think in terms of my favourite scene partner, it'd have to be Kit. Kit was the first person I ever had an acting relationship with because it was my first job. I think that the friendships that you form when you are a bit scared and a bit uncertain and tread in unfamiliar ground, they're the ones that tend to stick because you cling on to each other for support. Sansa, come here, little dove. I always loved working with Lena. What are you doing? Praying. You're perfect, aren't you? Praying. Just watching her and learning from her was the best drama lesson I could have ever hoped for. You disobeyed my king, your father, and now I'm paying the price. I don't care, you're my friend. Shireen Baratheon. I had a couple of scenes with Shireen that I loved doing. To have her level of humanity uh, and decency and cleverness and brightness. He, he just treats her as an equal, and I, I really like that aspect of the relationship that they had. I really miss Charles Dance, who played my father, Tywin Lannister. We had such a great chemistry and a great friendship. Damn. Despite our on-screen relationship. <laughs> I'm very fortunate to work with the greatest cast. Everybody is so professional and so incredibly kind and generous to their fellow actors. Everyone involved is, is like a, a family, and it's a family that amazingly still laughs and gets on with each other eight, nine years in. There's been no assholes, no people, divas, there's been no nothing, not even a suggestion. When it's all said and done, I'll miss the dynamic of the show, because there's nothing like this show. I mean, Game of Thrones means my 20s. I started this job when I was 22 and I am not 22 anymore. Game of Thrones is my entire career. I think I am gonna have a hard time saying goodbye to Sam. It's gonna be very hard to say goodbye to play Tyrion. I will miss simple things, like walking on to set for the first time each year in, in your new bits of costume, and just knowing you're part of something which is sort of at the center of attention. Yeah, it's gonna be very strange without it. It's been eight years. I'll tell you what I won't miss. Walking around with half a fucking beard, three quarters of the year. That's Jamie Lannister, the Queen's twin brother. I was like a little puppy when I arrived. I was like Bambi on, on, on the ice. And coming to Belfast, just I learned how to walk with pride and joy. I've grown up with these people. I've changed so much as a person because of these people. I'm so confident. I've just got this confidence from the show and from playing Arya. I really feel like I just want to inject that into each and every person that I know and love, but then also any girl that admires the work that I do. The journey that I've been on with Daenerys, it's sharpened me as an actor. It's, it's shown me the range that I, can, that I can do. And because of the heights that she goes to, it's forced me to find them within myself. Game of Thrones has been such an education for me in everything. Having to be around adults from the age of 10 and work on a professional set, get up and learn your lines and really think about a character has uh, also taught me a lot about myself. As an actor, you work and work and work and you audition and you don't get parts and you do get parts and sometimes they're great experiences and sometimes they're really shitty. Um, and this has been incredible. Thrones is... Uh the Holy Grail, where it's something that is enormously, globally, massively popular, and people think it's cool. You know, people are always trying to copy things or do variations of things. It's rare you get something which is a completely original fantasy. It's the most realistic show that I've ever done that also happens to have dragons and dead people walking around in it. I think a lot of fantasy is heavy on the dragon and light on the character. We're the opposite. This show will be discovered by 
generations to come. It's timeless. Every season there's something else bigger than the last season and better than the last season. And here we are, season eight. It's cinematic. We're making 10 hour movies every year. The fact that this is really a full stop um, on, on this story is sad because I think everyone's been so invested in this story that uh, we never want to see this, this come to a close, but it must and it will be good.